Installation Welcome to this tutorial for installing and using the Population Add-on. First, let's install the add-on. Go to Edit, Preferences in the Add-on tab. Click on Install. Let's start by installing the file populationaddon.zip. Once installed, let's activate it. Open the drop-down menu and select where you'd like to save the asset libraries on your computer. Create a folder and accept, then save. Now let's install the various asset packs. Click on Install Pack and install Volume 1. Wait a moment. Then install Volume 2. And finally, Volume 3, if you're using the Pro version. Once finalized, don't forget to save your preferences. You can now close the window. Go to the End Panel, B Production tab, and find all the B Production add-ons. Population appears. You may need to restart Blender to load the thumbnails. Single People Ambient Mode Now let's find out how Population works. There are two main modes, Single People and Crown. Single People is for animating single characters only. Crown allows you to animate entire crowds. In Single People, you have the option of animating characters that walk and run, or animating characters in general ambience positions, but that don't move. Let's start with the ambient version. First, we can choose a character from the casual, sporty, and business lists. Let's select Matthew, for example and now select an animation. You have communication, daily life, dance, and walk animations. There are no animations, as all movement, walk, and run will only be available in the character movement animation. Animations for work and sports. For example, let's test Conversations 2 with Matthew. We can import it in HD or low poly, and if required, we can randomize the color with a random color option. If we're making a crowd so that the characters don't always have the same t-shirt, pants, or hair color. In our case, we don't need it. We'll import it in HD. Click on Import. The character is imported at the center of your cursor, so it's important to position it correctly. Zoom in on our character and press the spacebar to see him animate. Note that all animations are recorded at 30 FPS. It is therefore important to have the correct frame rate when creating the 3D file. Note also that Population has the ability to adapt these animations if you decide to increase or decrease the frame rate. But in our case, let's stick with 30 FPS. Let's switch to preview mode to see the textures. Let's increase our timeline and take a closer look at the animation. Our character comes to life. Let's try a second one with Eric doing squats. Add him in low poly and click on Import. We can see that the quality is slightly different. Our friend is high poly with PBR textures in 8K. Our friend here is low poly with fewer textures in 1024 pixels. Press the spacebar and we can see the animation. Let's switch to preview mode for a more detailed look. All animations are looped and repeated indefinitely throughout the timeline. Our friend will do squats indefinitely. Single people walk, run. Now let's select the second walk and run mode. This time, you can still select any of the characters. But now we see that in the animations, all those not related to the walk and run movements don't appear. So let's go to the walk category, where in run, we can see different walking cycles. Let's select walk and choose the first walking cycle using Ashley. Let's use the HD model. Click on import. We automatically switch to edit mode using the cursor to draw our character's path. Put yourself in the view you're most interested in, and don't forget to create a surface on which your character can move. All that's left to do is draw a curve, and the character appears. You can switch to Object Mode, and we press Play to see the movement. Ashley moves along the curve.
Several parameters, like reverse, are available, so your character will walk in the opposite direction. Other parameters allow you to create different characters by multiplying the curve. But this is not interesting in our case, as the same character is replicated. These parameters will be useful for crowd management later on. Let's try another character this time. Let's take a businessman, Christopher. A man walks with a telephone, and click on Import to draw the curve. This time, Christopher walks simulating a telephone in his hand. Let's do a final test, this time with a sportsman such as Gus, jogging. Let's draw a curve. And off we go! Select only our friend to see him jog. Classic mode. Now let's discover a new mode, crowd mode. The first thumbnail allows you to select the mode you wish to use. Let's start with classic mode. In this mode, you'll need to select a surface with the eyedropper. Then we'll import a series of characters and animations from the list. Let's use a character with conversation one as animation and click on add new person. I'll use Arno with conversation two. Then I'll use Gary with Listen. I want to use Patricia with Listen crossed arms, and I'll click on Add. In this case, I'll check the random color function, which will allow me to vary the colors of the character's clothes by a very random crowd. Then I click on Import. My crowd is created. Note that each character is imported five times. Arno five times, Andre five times, so that each instance of the character can have a different animation start than the others. In this way, not all characters start their animation at the same time. Click the spacebar on the keyboard and we see all our characters animate. A number of parameters are available, such as character density and minimum distance between characters. The higher the value, the further apart the characters will be and the lower the value, the closer the characters will be. You can also activate the Look Target mode, which ensures that all characters are looking in the same direction. Let's add an object, whatever it is. In our case, let's add an empty. Let's activate Lock Target mode and select Look Objects for our empty. As if by magic, all the characters look in the direction of our object. This could be interesting for a concert. Seed allows you to randomize. Random rotation allows you to change the orientation of each character. Cluster mode is available here, but we can also see it in the rest of the video. Note that to delete a crowd, simply click on the delete key on the keyboard. Here in the tree structure, you can delete an animation, then add a new one and import a new crowd. Let's use John in conversation 1 and add him with the random color function. Click on Import. Let's open the shader panel and select John's shader. Note that in crowd modes, only low poly characters are imported. This is to improve preview speed and performance. If you want to zoom in on characters, you'll need to import them in single mode and in HD. Switching to preview mode, we can see that with a single character and a single animation, we really get the impression that the crowd is completely different. This is made possible by the population shaders, which apply the variation option. If I remove it, we can see that this time we have the same character everywhere, which is much less interesting in the case of a crowd. Note that all shaders are available and that you can manually adjust specularity, roughness and other parameters. Random Color. Let's use the Random Color option. Import a single character. We can see that every time I want to duplicate him, the color of his clothes and hair will change. This is a very powerful tool for creating varied crowds very quickly. Cluster Mode. 
Let's open the cluster mode. As in the previous mode, select the surface onto which you want to import your crowd. Select different characters and animations from the list. Once you've created your list, click on Import. Let's enlarge our surface to get a better idea of the influence of clusters. The Density button increases the number of characters in your clusters. Cluster size changes the size of your clusters. Clusters proximity allows you to space your clusters. Cluster empty area lets you add characters to your clusters. It's also possible to couple this with the object look mode, add a null object. Let's move it. Check look target and select our empty with the eyedropper. All our characters are now looking in the direction of our empty. Press spacebar to play the animation. Seed allows randomization. Random rotation is used when you're not using the look target and ensures that not all characters look inside the circle. Minimum distance adjusts the distance between each character to prevent them from overlapping. Follow curve. Now let's select the follow curve mode which creates a moving crowd. First, we select our character, then add an animation. As you can see, communication, daily life, and other animations are not available as they are not moving animations. Just go to the walk or run categories to see the various animations associated with them. Let's add this character with this animation and so on. Let's create a crowd with three characters. Don't forget to randomize color for a more interesting effect. Click on Import. Blender automatically switches to Curve Drawing Mode and lets you draw the path your characters will take. Of course, you need to have a surface on the ground to be able to draw. And now I'm back in Object Mode and can see my crowd in the various accessible parameters. I can see the Seed, which lets you vary the location. I can also see Count, which lets you add characters. Spline Position Seed lets you change the position of splines. The Spline Spread Width lets you widen or narrow your path. You can edit your path at any time by switching to Edit Mode to modify the curve. When set to zero, Random Start ensures that all characters start at the same time. If you increase the value, the characters will have already moved along the curve when the animation starts. The reverse button changes the direction of the crowd. As we saw earlier, each character is imported five times, so that each of these five instances has an animation that starts differently from the other, for a different and varied crowd feel. Stadium Mode Let's try the Stadium Mode. This time, it's important to select a collection containing all the seats or objects that will allow each character to position himself. In our example, each seat is an independent object that I have placed in a collection called chairs. It's this collection that I'm going to select to tell the add-on that each character must position himself on each seat. Now let's select different characters and animations. In our example, I want to select daily life. Foot Stadium, imported, and I'll do this for different characters. In our example, there's no need to import a huge number of people. Click on Import and wait for it to load. Our crowd is created. Click on Spacebar to play the various animations. Various buttons are available, such as translation buttons to position the characters in relation to your chairs. We need, for example, to move them a little forward and then lower them so that their feet are on the ground. If your objects have rotation problems, you can adjust them here with the different values to make them appear in the right direction. Grid Mode Let's take a look at the new grid mode. As with the other modes, we're going to choose a series of characters associated with different animations. In this mode, you don't need a surface. Just click on Import. We've imported our characters. You can space the characters on X or Y, add instances on X and Y. 
We can randomly rotate the characters, but also randomly position them. Both of these factors are influenced by the seed, which allows for variation. The stagger lets you shift them to X or Y, and we still have the lock target option, which lets our characters look in one direction. Now you know all about population. I hope you enjoy using this add-on, and happy Blender! Enjoy!